Happy New Year, folks. I'm Gene Della Sala, president of Audioholics, and today we have Hugo Rivera, vice president of marketing. Happy New Year, Gene. I hear the word on the street is that there is a new surround format coming to town. There is a new surround format coming to town, and it's our friends from DTS. <laughs> Interesting. All right, we kind of predicted this one, though. Yeah, you know, look at the history. Let's step back for a minute before we talk about this new surround format. Let's time travel. Let's look at the history of surround sound in the consumer marketplace. You know, back in the early 90s, Dolby came out with Dolby Digital. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was the first discrete surround format. It really transformed surround sound because before that, we had matrix surround sound. We had right. basically two channels of discrete audio with the rest derived from right. the phase relationships of the audio signal. Mm -hmm. So going to discrete was a huge leap forward. The problem with the, with the original Dolby Digital is it was massive compression mm -hmm. and there was no stereo separation in the surrounds. I mean, it right. was just dreaded. I mean, and then you listen to like concert videos. I have some of my old Dolby Digital Fleetwood Mac, for example. It mm -hmm. just it sounds like uh, an MP3, <laughs> right? But for years, Dolby said, "Oh, you know, compression doesn't matter. You know, it's more efficient. It sounds great." Well, then DTS came out shortly after with their surround format, mm -hmm. and it just blew away Dolby. I mean, it sounded much more real, better stereo separation. It sounds almost as good as DTS HD today, which is a lossless Kodak. Hmm. And then it took years for Dolby to admit, hey, we need to stop using so much compression and we need a lossless Kodak now right. too. So they came out with True HD. Mm -hmm. Of course, DTS came out with DTS HD. Right. And what happened when that happened? <laughs> D Dolby came out first, DTS came out second, DTS dominated the consumer market. Sorry guys, that's what happened. <laughs> Almost every Blu-ray we have has DTS HD, not Dolby True HD. <laughs> we love both formats, but DTS basically said, you know what, here we are. Yeah. And now the same thing happened. Dolby came out with Atmos. Mm -hmm. It came out as a huge marketing campaign, as the greatest thing in 20 years, the greatest breakthrough. But where did it go? It fizzled out. We got Transformers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> and we got four Atmos, four or five manufacturers doing speakers that are bouncing sound off the wall like it's, you're playing billiards. <laughs> no comment. So I believe the fifth on that yeah. one. So DTS is now out. You know they've got all the major manufacturers. They got Yamaha, Denon, Marantz, mm -hmm. Onkyo, Steinway. I mean they have. They claim they have about 90% of the hardware vendors and by the next year they'll have full penetration. Wow, that's awesome. So, you know, people that rushed out to go buy their app, to get their Atmos on, you probably should have waited like we predicted. Early, <laughs> early adopters pay the penalty. Unfortunately. Yeah. They sure do. And, you know, there's very little known about DTS X right now. But we do know, if you look at their website, and they used to call it MDA, DTS MDA. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like they changed n names Nomenclature. again. Nomenclature. Okay. But they claim it's a more open uh, placement. It's more open friendly. Okay. So you put your speakers in the room, um, and it's supposedly an object-based audio, audio system too, but it doesn't tell you to bounce sound off the of ceilings. It doesn't tell you to put the speakers in the ceilings. From what we gather, it seems much more placement flexible than Dolby Atmos. That's a good thing because one of the things we've been criticizing since the beginning is the lack of flexibility when it comes to the placement. Yeah, I mean, Dolby is claiming Atmos is like agnostic to speaker placement. It's all object-based. Meanwhile, they're still relying on a seven channel basic bed and then they're telling you where to put the height channels. Mm -hmm. So how is that really placement agnostic? Yeah, I don't understand that part, to be so, honest. So, you know, it's nice, it's nice because now, you know, by next year we're gonna have receivers with Dolby Atmos, we're gonna have receivers with DTS-X, we're gonna have HDCP 2.2, HDMI 2.0, so we're gonna have the next generation video and audio supported. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's why I said, anytime this new tech comes out, wait a little while. Yeah. Yeah, because, because then you can benefit, you know? Right, because now you're gonna get both for the same price. And we don't know what, what's gonna happen with Oro, if that's gonna be an upgrade fee. You know, Dan and Amaranth are charging an upgrade fee now. We don't know what's gonna happen, but I will tell you this. I find it very hard to believe in the next four or five years we're gonna have three competing formats in the mainstream, mm -hmm. okay? Quite frankly, most people can't adopt high channels. Most people are lucky to do five discrete channels. Absolutely. So, you know, this might be a niche, Mm -hmm. It might catch on and just be a de facto in five channel or seven channel. We don't really know. But yep. the bottom line is DTS is here, folks. So this is a game changer and it's taking some of the fizzle out of Dolby. I'll tell you what, you know, make a comment on what you just said about uh, the five channels. This is especially true in Europe. 
you know, where right. people don't have the kind of housing that we have over here in the States, you know. Most people in Europe, they live, you know, in apartment complexes and things like that. So there, are, there's less space, you know. Yeah. And of course, I'm, I'm using huge generalizations. You know, me personally, I've lived in Spain. I've lived in France. Right. So, you know, on those... You're well-traveled. <laughs> I've been around. And how many houses have you been to where they've had speakers firing up at the ceiling? None. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're not... And, and I'm pretty sure that DTS won't be compatible with that. I don't want to speak for them, but they've given no indication that they support the Atmos speakers. Yeah. So, you know, discreet is the way to go, as we and I have found with our testing. So we'll see what happens in the next six months to a year. I think 2015 is going to be a very interesting time for surround sound and home yeah. theater. Exciting stuff. Yeah. So we'll keep you updated. You know, as we find out more information about DTSX, we will be posting more videos. Absolutely. We'll be back. We will be back. On that note, remember to subscribe. Definitely subscribe and keep listening, my friends. Yeah. Keep listening. <laughs>